The first one, good sanity management. Two, proper sweeping techniques. These two things will make pro uh, professional difficulty a lot easier. And I'm going to go ahead and throw in a third bonus, how to survive a hunt. Hey, what's up? Dust the Viking here. So this video is basically geared for those of you who find professional difficulty too hard, but enjoy turning on the fuse box because it adds an objective to the game. It's more engaging. It gives you something to do. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about, as we said before, is sanity management. One of the best ways to do this is to run a candle and lighter. The reason you run a candle and lighter is... In case uh, it's raining heavily, it's not here. Or two, if the ghost blows your candle out, you can just relight it. Now, if you're operating solo, this is a fine open. I do this open all the time. After this, it's going to be making efficient trips in and out of the house. Don't sit in the house for long periods of time. Always have a goal in mind when you're inside the house. You're going to set something up. You're going to go watch something. If you're going to sit uh, by something, like let's say a dots projector, get a candle in there next to your dots projector that you can sit next to while you watch it. Now let's talk about sweeping techniques. There are some people who open with the video camera. Kind of helps you look around here for uh, ghost orbs and stuff like that. So that's one way to sweep. Another way to sweep is uh, if you're already in here with basically no tools, it's just a flashlight and a candle, is to communicate with the ghost. Ask it to give a sign and ask it where it is. Can you give us a sign? Where are you? You know, I heard some ambient creaking, but I also thought maybe I heard something kind of thump vaguely, which might be downstairs, so let's go check that out. And I always like to turn on a, a central light, just for ease of navigation. Did I hear something again? Give us a sign. Give us a sign. Where are you? Relight the candle, see? Now these doors are both shut. We're going to leave them that way. If they had been opened, we might shut them so that if we come down here to check on them again, uh, we'll be able to tell if they've been opened or shut. Looks like all our doors are uh, shut. Is that only Nightmare that they're ajar? I play, I play Nightmare mode too much, I guess. I thought that was normal. <laughs> I look for doors that are ajar. Okay, so we're getting no signs out of the ghost whatsoever. It's a fairly stubborn ghost. So let's put our candle and our lighter here in a good central location so that we can use it or a teammate can use it. Now, if you are playing with a teammate, most likely you are, uh, one thing you can do is have your friend carry tools while you uh, carry a candle with them. The candle will work for both of you if you stay close. You can also break up in teams of two if you have four people. Uh, if you think you have a demon, get crucifixes down ASAP. We'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in the future. All right, so if you have access to the thermometer, this is your next sweeping tool when dealing with a very quiet, hard-to-find ghost like what we're dealing with right now. The breaker box has been on for a bit. So that means that the house has had time to warm up. That's also why we sweep with the candle. Not only because we're already in here, we already have the candle, we're already preserving sanity, but because it gives us time to allow the house to warm up, which is going to make the thermometer a lot more powerful. So we see some drops to 16, that's 
really nothing. Does this push in? This one pushes in. Alright, we're good in here. Close the door. We're good in here. You usually want to sit in the room there a little bit just to make sure that the thermometer gets gets a good read. So it looks like there was something down here after all. We've got a cool hall. Oh, look, this door is open now. Well, here we go. Freezing. That's our alarm bell. Oh, we're, we'll throw that down. We could have a demon. This will be the one thing. The demon is the most dangerous ghost in the game now. Not because it's super fast, but because it can hunt at any time and it can blindside you before you're ready. And the one thing that will kill you in a hunt faster than anything else is when you get taken by surprise. And in that moment of shock, your brain stops thinking. And you're going to run around in circles and you're going to run into just the dumbest hiding spot possible. And then it's going to find you and kill you. <laughs> so demons are, are pretty sinister in, uh, in that regard. So I've got two crucifixes. I'm going to place one near the door. And one back here. Okay, that should cover. All right, so we've got our safety down. Safety, safety is a big deal. And if we see a crucifix melt suddenly, then boom, we know we're dealing with the demon. All right, it did play with this door. Probably should have grabbed a black light while it was out there, but I didn't think. His fingerprints are gonna be faded now. But we'll go ahead and get a black light anyway. It's being very passive. So it's acting like a shade, which did get uh, some behaviors, so. That's one of the uh, ghosts that now has behaviors. That sanity is at 80% still. Next is going to be um, deployment of objects. The book typically needs to sit for a while. Some ghosts will write right away, but some are pretty stubborn about it. So I like to get the book down uh, as soon as I can. Now, the only thing I've seen it interact with was this door. So I'm going to go ahead and set the book near the door. If you've seen the ghost interact with anything else, set it near things that have been interacted with. Or if the ghost seems to have a favorite spot or item, set your book near that favorite spot or item. We're going to get back out of the house as quick as we can and grab our other tools. This is going to help keep our sanity up because we're not sitting down there waiting, looking for responses. Now there is a time and a place where we will sit down there, but then we'll bring, you know, candles back down there and use those for that stage. All right, so we're gonna grab a spirit box and we're gonna grab a dots projector. And for this, we will actually be down there for a little bit. This is why we left our candle and uh, lighter here. We're gonna come back up and get those. Oh, nice. There we go. Let's put that there. Let's grab our black light. We got a fresh door interaction. All right, no fingerprints. So we're pretty good unless it was an obake doing obake things. And we have to have our lights off for this. So let's just step in here. Where are you? Are you old? Are you friendly? Are you male? Where are you? Are you old? Where are you? Are you friendly? Are you female? Okay, so nothing right there. I got a little carried away, we forgot our candle. We forgot our candle, hold on. Oh, it did just move something. All right, come on, can't. Whoop. Come on, candle. 
We're gonna get the EMF reader down here as well. Oh yeah, it's throwing a lot of stuff. All right. What? Okay, there's an EMF three. Whatever it was was over here. Put that there. Let's bring our candle over here. Looks like it was that paintbrush, actually. Ooh, it blew out my candle. Put our lighter there. It seems to be a little bit more active back here. So we're going to move our book. And now let's get back on our spirit box and we'll turn off the light. and sit by our candle. Where are you? Are you friendly? Where are you? Are you old? Alright, so it's clearly right here. Right next to us. Let's grab our lighter here. It does not seem to be giving out any evidence. So this is where we need to get our video camera out. Since we're coming up short on evidence, that means that we could have things like ghost orbs. or basically things we haven't really checked for yet. It could be a dots projector, but won't get on the dots projector while we're watching, uh, aka Gorio. So we're going to get back up here and we're going to check our sanity again. And here we've dipped below 60. Now we're going to take our sanity pills and stay topped off. Going to get the camera down there. I'll bring two, just in case I don't get a good angle set up with one. This one kind of a cramped space with this dots projector. Might be hard to get a good camera angle, so we'll just set up two. This will also give us better coverage for our uh, ghost orb. See, so I'll set this here, this here, or not. Okay, we're not setting that there. Ch change of plans. All right, that'll do. That'll do. Now we'll get back out of here because again, we're just preserving sanity. Also. Just don't interact with the cursed the cursed objects. That's who wants to get a better feel for professional. Because the cursed objects, basically in a nutshell, they all do the same thing. They drop your sanity and they proc a hunt. All right, so we're gonna have to watch this camera a little bit. We don't see any ghost orbs there. We're gonna watch this camera. That's more for looking at ghost orbs behind the shelf. I don't see any back there. This has got a better view of the dots. So let's watch our dots projector for a little bit. And before I forget, Oh, we saw something there. It moved that paintbrush again, didn't it? <laughs> Look at it move that paintbrush around. This is the kind of stuff about Faz that's really fun. It's like right there. It's lit It's just there's an entity sitting back here sort of in the dark playing with a paintbrush. It's just creepy. But let's not forget that we did have freezing breath, so... Starting to look like no ghost orb. I almost kind of wish I would have pointed that camera back toward this one. Okay, so it looks like we're not getting a dots projector, but this is plenty of time for it to write in the book. And of course, you can also see EMF5s on this. If you see a line, you see how this has got like a front and a back? If you see a line on the front that goes up five and a matching line on the back that goes down five, there's a 90% a chance that that was an EMF-5. Now, I say 90% chance because you can get weird ghost events where it'll do, like, multiple things very quickly. And it will stack together and look like five when it's not. So, usually you want to see an EMF-5 uh, a few times before you uh, really commit to pulling the trigger on it. Alright, let's check our book. There we go. Now we're going to go back to our evidence. We're going to put in ghost writing. So we're leaning heavily into shade here. Heavily into shade. Let's see what the last evidence for shade is really quick. 
go down here for shade. It's EMF5. I knew it was EMF5. I literally just checked the box. Good job, Dusk. Good tutorial, everybody. Look at the uh, Captain Obvious handle this very well. Give a, give us a sign. Now, there's no longer freezing breath in here, is there? So it's moved. Alright, so let's grab our thermometer. Oh, it did not move. We're just not seeing our freezing breath right now. Oh yeah, it's still it's still in here. This thing is such a shade. Give us a sign. I took the lighter with me because I'm silly. Where are you? We potentially could just mark down a shade here and call it good, but so many of the ghosts are, um, they just act very randomly. And I wouldn't be surprised if it did turn out to be a revenant. Now, what do we need for revenant though? Let's check revenant and see if we can rule that out. Uh, oh, the revenant's a ghost orb. Oh gosh. I keep hearing it flick a light, but it's not this light. Do you think it's upstairs? There's absolutely no ghost orb in this room. Let's see if it's, uh, what is the light above that room? Be this kitchen light, but I turn that on. Now that we've walked out, it's thrown something again. Let's go back down and get that EMF. another three. Alright, here's what we're going to have to do. Go some more active in the dark. So we're going to turn the light to its room off. We'll go ahead and turn this off as well. All ghosts are more active in the dark. So what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to put it in the dark. We're going to leave the house in case it's a shade. This will get it uh, running at maximum activity. And then we're just going to have to watch the, uh, the activity chart here. And we'll keep an eye out for stray ghost orbs, but at this point, I'm confident that this is a shade. I think we're going to probably just have to go with the fact that we're pretty much proved that it was not a ghost orb. It's a very small room. If there was a ghost orb, we would have found it. And at this point, you know, I'd say this is when you'd look to your secondary objectives and see if there's any of this stuff that you want to do. But that's not what we're going to do. We're going to talk about the third bonus thing, and that's how to survive a hunt. Now, of course, if you have smudge sticks, this is the ultimate way to survive a hunt. It's just blow this bad boy as soon as you hear the ghost get close to you. But the main, the main, the main thing is uh, just to have a couple of favorite hiding spots on a map and know where the ghost is. Ghosts will do the most searching on a hunt close to their room. <clears throat> so we probably don't want to hide down here. A hiding spot I like can be here. It's not too bad. Does not look like the tires that this is they move that around a little bit but this is a really good spot right like this is clutch right here but the ghost is in the basement so not not that much anymore so let's say we're right here and our, our flashlight starts flashing even though that's a good hiding spot it's not because it's too close to the ghost room and the ghost will be searching this area so instead we're going to turn and run like hell say make sure your sprint is always ready and we're going to go just far away from the ghost room and try and block line of sight as we go. And that brings this hiding spot up here. And you just turn your flashlight off. And uh, and you're good. Honestly, like, I, I would survive 99% of the hunts here. 
as long as I didn't do anything silly and give myself away. And if I do hear the ghost get close and I get nervous, just burn the smudge stick. And good to go. Other good hiding places. Again, anywhere that the ghost is just really far away from. This room, uh, you might think, oh, the ghost can see you if it comes in the door here. Yeah, it, it probably can. So I would recommend hiding behind the door in situations like this. This is the best hiding spot in this room. The ghost might peek its head in, but a lot of times when they're just checking a room, they'll just come in and do this and then walk away. Now, if the ghost does get that close and you have a smudge stick, by all means, burn it. And then we'll check out this room here. Again, behind the door, pretty good hiding spot. And this hiding spot is blocked in. So as you can see, keeping in mind doors as good hiding spots, if a hiding spot is taken away, like behind that, there's just a nice little secondary one right here. It's pretty cool. The one thing that you cannot hide behind, uh, I've discovered, seem to be vehicles. Every time I've ever tried to hide behind a vehicle, they always see me. So I've quit doing that. Here's another really good hiding spot. We can get down behind this. Surviving a ghost hunt. Now, keep in mind the uh, when the ghost is hunting and you're using a smudge stick to repel a ghost during a hunt, that's map wide. It gets blinded map wide. You can have somebody out here in the van that's watching through like a head cam. Uh, you could be on, you know, in Discord with your friend. They're like, "Oh my God, I'm gonna die! I'm gonna die! I'm gonna die!" And you can you can light a smudge stick out here to save them inside, give them a chance to get away. Or if you're not sure uh, if your friends are safe in there or not, and it's getting down to the wire, you can just periodically burn these things during the hunt. <clears throat> burn 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, and then we'd burn the next one. And this would give pretty good blanket coverage during a hunt. Now, you burn all your smudge sticks, but, you know, in a pinch, you can really save some teammates that way. Anyway, it looks like we got ourselves a shade here. Let's go ahead and lock it in and see if it's right. Also, we could hear the footsteps. If it was a revenant, it would have been walking slow. So we have even additional evidence Welcome there back. that it was Thanks indeed a shade. Anyway, I hope this really basic, straightforward, simple guide helps you out in your professional games. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.